Hello, good afternoon, and uh, hello to Zilby, who's giving us a nice a nice face view. Um, so hopefully your uh, Fridays have all been going well. Hopefully your your week has all been going well. I'm looking forward to continuing to work on uh, this um, uh, this data table. Uh, so let's see, where are we? Right, so we got, um, you know what? The more I think about it, the more I don't actually know if I need a filters. I think a search is good enough for this. Right now. So I'm going to remove the filter by, and then we're going to keep the search. And then if we need to, we'll um, we'll figure out how to do that later. That's a future us time. All right, so we have our data tables. We have our course articles. Twisted Seed, hello. How are you doing today? Uh, we're able to type in. Oh, wait. Oh, I'm not able to type in. Oh, right. We've got to get that set up. Uh, so I believe we have on input, right, for the, yeah, I think we have to deal with that entire thing. You're hanging on? Um, well, I mean, hanging on is is good, I suppose. It's better than falling. Um, I, th I think I'm doing pretty good. Spent today going through a lot of SOC 2 stuff, uh, sort of like figuring out what that, how that looks. It's a lot. It's a lot of things. I think it actually is possible. Like it's it's very possible for a startup to do it. It's just there's a lot. Um, also, it's not necessarily cheap. Tea kettle drone, how are you doing? Hello. How's your uh, Friday been? Okay, yeah, so we have on input, which is an attribute value. Do I need to block this? I wonder if I should just always do that for easy extensibility, but it's always just easy to add that in later. Ooh, okay, so I want the search text. So we have the input search text. Uh, so the, yeah, I, I'm definitely going to want... I definitely need the block. Okay, so we have our inputs, so we should do these all in new lines.
Okay, so we have that, and we probably have it's probably value. Okay, so I bet I bet that will let me now type in text. Yep. Okay, so we got that. Uh, you're doing pretty good. Mind is numb from trying to learn about shaders and making a small PR to one of my dependencies. Uh, nice. I've always wanted to learn how to do shaders. It, like there's so much like magic that seems to be able to happen with games or game dev or art. or it seems like you could just make crazy cool stuff. Um, heads up about GitHub bot accounts making meaningless typo corrections theory is that they're sold for bad actors to appear more trusted interesting i've not had any github bot accounts try to make prs to my to my repos yet just um just github's depend bot but If the typo correction is like good, that's fine. But like, yeah, if they're sold, they're probably yeah, okay. So they're they're doing the good old like a uh, social media thing, right? Where they're like doing some meaningless stuff, getting like a bunch of um karma as you will, uh as you were, and then selling it to that way then like inject a bunch of bad code into your repo. Yeah, that sucks. They make it so you trust the bot, and then you're like, oh, yeah, you were super good with all that stuff that didn't mean anything, and now I'm going to let you, like, you know, inject this thing into the real code without paying attention because I got used to it. Can't remember what the name of that is. There's a There's a name for it. Or when you when you start trusting something simply because how um, simply because you're used to it. Oh, do I want to clear in this? I probably want to clear in the search, don't I? It's not a bot like Dependabot. It's a user GitHub account being automated. Oh, okay. Interesting. So it looks like a normal person, but it's really just a bot. I mean, yeah. It's a thing. It's a thing. The user had forked 34 repos and was just doing single typo corrections yeah then it looks like they done a lot yeah if the corrections are good it's probably fine but they're probably not they're probably useless type stuff i wonder how long it's going to take somebody to write a bot to like just rewrite everybody's documentation with chat gpt and just do a PR request for it and just like have it go through all of GitHub and just like do do a um, like here's like a, here's like your new your new GitHub. That could be kind of useful, but uh, I mean, guess like for me, when I think of that kind of stuff, I, I tend to be like slightly more useful, but even then like a full, a full rewrite of documentation is too much. <laughs> but if you do like a small bit, like a small, small amount, um, you could get some experience doing open source and then also like provide some nice services. Like th there's some, there's some nice things that we could do. Um, okay, so I want a clear, I want some kind of like clear button. So like sometimes you put like a little X in here. Now, I don't think I have anything. I don't think I have a pattern, right? In input for like a clear. No, I don't. So what I would like to do is put a button. Either inside the input 
or right next to it that's like clear and then when you click it it um well it obviously it emits the clear event so that way we just clear out what's what's in it i know sometimes it's like done with a little x at the end of the input uh and i can't remember the right way to do that i think like i think you would put it next to it and you just like um move it with css in it's something like that if i were to just put in a let's say i just did that what do you look like that <laughs> that looks absolutely terrible um okay Is there something I can do with Bootstrap? Gonna do a check in line. No, those are in line like that. Button add ons. Oh, so I could do a button at the end like that. So on a checkbox. I think this is about as close as I can get. So I could do a button. And you become a button add-on. Oh, interesting. So what's the difference between left and right? So the first one is button button outline secondary and then this one is oh it's just have it afterwards okay so if i put that on here Okay, so we need children, so we need some kind of like clear or something like that. 
So we do clear. Um, button style. Okay, so that'll be a text button style. That's fine. Um, callback for if it's clicked. We would need to handle that. An action icon. Ooh, I could do an action icon of like a reset thing. I don't think I have any icons for reset, but let's see. We have a brand, star heart, contact mark, Twitter, Twitch, YouTube small, check, Discord. Ooh, we have a, uh, see, a warning doesn't really make sense for this. Okay, and then classes. Okay, so... So I'm going to put that into there. Um, I probably also want to disable it unless there's something inside of it, inside of the uh, the input. Um, what are you upset about? Can I find? Bring it in. So you look not like a button at all. It looks exactly the same as that. I don't like it. It's too... Nobody's going to look at this and realize that that's a button and that's not a button. Uh, hold on, I'm going to turn off night vision so I can see, or dark reader if I could, to see if this um, looks like vastly different without it. No, they both look exactly like buttons, except that one's a button. Not cool. Not cool. Um, okay, so... Oh, you know what else? Bootstrap has a bunch of uh, themed examples. Wait, no, not themes. Okay, they have examples like these. Snippets. This is what I was thinking about. And do you have one of like forms? Not really. You can't see? Um, Dottie, hello. You can't see it? Um, huh, it shows that you're able to see. Let me double check. Uh, in my, in my preview, I can see, I can see this page. Yeah, uh, what, what can't, what can't you see? Or is it blank screen for you? Um, also, hello Dottie, how are you doing today? Oh, couldn't see the clear. Oh, you're right. You're right. Cat cam is in the way. I'm, I I moved the uh, code so you could see that, but I forgot about the other one. So hold on. Let's let's go back. I'll show you. Uh, if I bring up Dev Tools all the way up here, here is here is the uh, form. So. This is not a button. This is a button. Like there's no indication that you can click on this. And with this one being just like a label looking like that, uh, I've, I've done a pretty good job at um, 
at showing you oh but maybe i can change the color of it maybe i can change the color and then maybe that will make it a little bit better and i think i can do in button type i wonder if i can change the type of the button no 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 i don't want an actual type button style that's what I want to do. I want to do primary light. So where does that go? Button style. Okay, well, I have it. I have a lot of buttons using this color here. So maybe that helps. Maybe this helps a little bit. What if I what if I just replace it with an X? I mean, that's not too bad, right? That's better. I'm, uh, I know that Bootstrap uses a little bit of Fawn Awesome behind the scenes, but I don't think I'm using Fawn Awesome. What? I don't remember if I'm using Fawn Awesome. That might be a better way of putting it. Maybe. Maybe, but probably not. Um, but I, what I have been doing is if I need like an icon, I'll just go to Google, Google icons or Google fonts. I'll find an icon, download it, add it to the project, and then just like throw that in there. And I have I have like a bunch of icons already in there that I can just use. I'm gonna usually bring them in as SVGs, so that makes it pretty um, pretty cheap. You're doing this as button outline secondary. If I don't add in that button outline. Like what happens if I don't have you? That's what you look like. Okay. So not really a big change. Yeah, so we have button class, button, button primary light. Um, type button.
Uh, is there anything else I can do with buttons to make it stand out a little bit more? Or perhaps there's something I can do to make the other one not look like a button outlined. Yeah, not much, not much there. Um, oh, right. I want to look at um, back to font. Okay, so what about this text? What can I, can I change anything there? Ooh, not sure if this helps. Hold on, let's take a look. Good old stack overflow. Um, let's see. So, oh, that thing. Yeah, that's what I want. So what is this? Um, search input, X clear, search. With the latest bootstrap form, I'm trying to put an X in search input. I could simply use not supported Firefox trying to use an add-on negative with the negative margins. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. How can I have my X button show up inside? Um, think that input group add-on is the problem. Button type button, class button button, BG transparent style margin left. Oh, interesting. Okay, so, but that's all class stuff. Okay, so what if I try this? Let's try... Oh, so this would be setting the margin left by 40 pixels, Z index. Okay, so I guess if I, if I just throw in the button like this, if I don't use a component. Hold on, I'm going to turn on um, off dark reader to see if that's there's I see there's something there. There is definitely something there. Um, okay, so the I class, so if I replace so it's just empty. It's uh, it's not showing anything there. So it's not loading the icon. Uh, but if I replace you with just like let's say the X or an icon that I get, 
Like I could literally do that with an X. <laughs> that that works. That doesn't look that bad either. Yeah. FA Towns is fun awesome. Okay, so basically I need some kind of icon, which um do I have Oh, I didn't I didn't create anything with icons in it because I'm I was like lazy and not trying to create my own playbook or whatever it's called. Um, okay, so we have uh, star heart, contact mark, Twitter, Twitch, YouTube small, check, Discord, and warning. And then we have all these that we've created as SVG files. So if I could go get an SVG, or we could just try, we could just put an icon in here. So let's let's try that. So if I throw in I don't think any of those are are those things, okay. Whoa, whoa, that's not what I want. Nope. Go to, not D first. Um, I need an icon type, and then the rest is, okay, good. Um, let's see. I forgot which one I wanted to use. You can't find it? Of course you can't find it. Um, let's throw, let's put in a star. Let's see how this looks. <laughs> it made it really big. Okay, okay, okay. Um, icon type. I think we could do icon size. Or maybe it's like size. Uh, there is a size, there's a BP icon size. Okay. Like, I don't know why that's not auto importing anymore. It's kind of, kind of sad. Um, what are my choices? I mean, no definition found. Uh, like tiny? Tiny is a choice. Okay. Uh, maybe not tiny. That didn't look right. Small. Oh, it's making it's making this too big. So probably tiny is right. It's not exactly what I want, but it's pretty close. Um, is there even a smaller than? than that tiny smaller small normal large so I can do like tinier 
So what if I do um Mano? So if I normal size this, it's not centered vertically. I wonder if I could center this vertically with what? Um, OK, so I do. Image class, okay, so icon type pop classes clone. Where do I do the size? Where does that come from? Oh, I do a little bit of translation depending upon which one it is. So I could do something like, hey, Nano, your like width is that, but I should all uh we should also do um text. What's the what's the alignment for height? There's a there's a font height. No, it's not font height. It's um not text align. Something about like how how tall a like standard height is. Not that. Not paragraph. Oh geez, what it what is it? Is it text? It's not text align. Uh, font. Don't think it's one of the font ones. It's something you do to paragraph sometimes when you're like, ooh, oh, I don't remember what it's called anymore. Um, oh, we could just look through every single one here. Not, I don't think it's max height. I, I think there's like something specific to how how tall the text is, and you can set the text height. But I don't, there's something about that, but I don't think this is showing me. It allows you to change the size of the height of the text field with, without changing the height of the text itself. I should probably just look it up. Let's just look it up. I was kind of hoping that would just magically come to my brain and it would be it would be nice. It would be nice.
Okay, looking it up. Um, let's see. CSS set paragraph text height. I think it's height. Line height. Line height. That's what it is. Line height. I can set that to be... Ooh, none of those are doing anything. Oh yeah, even that doesn't do anything. Where I set it like really high. Uh, then can I do, um, vertical align? I was doing something, but not to, not to the image. It's doing that to the, oh, so maybe I don't want line height. Uh, could we do margin? How about, so what, uh, auto zero? No, that doesn't do it unless I have like the tech, the height maybe set up. Oh no, I have to set it to like the height for button, wouldn't I, for that to work. I have to do something like, um, Height. I don't know if auto would work with that. Ooh, yeah. No good at CSS, but can you make the image float so it doesn't affect the parent layout? No, I don't want it to float. Like once you, so the problem with CSS is once you start like floating or removing it from the layout, everything else sort of breaks and you start having to rely upon that a lot more often with everything else around it so it's generally a good habit to just never use that unless you absolutely have to or like you're actually floating around text i'm not floating around text i'm trying to do other things um let's see if i look at this for this image now do you have do you have a padding of oh look at this it has a padding bottom of 16. Why do you have a padding bottom of 16? Padding. That doesn't do it. Can I see where you're coming from? It's one rem. Uh, it's one rem. There it is, padding bottom. Okay, so stylist, oh, whatever that is. Oh, for this image, okay. So we have a padding bottom of one rem. Uh, is that just for star? Is that just for star? Is it just the one I I grabbed? So, adding bottom one ramp. Oh no no no, where was that? It's just for star. If I did anything else, it would have been fine. It's just star. I put a padding bottom of on it for one rem because like with where I'm using star, it like has that problem. Uh, for everything else, I need to like undo it. That's cool. Cool me, go me. This, this is that like future me hates past me or past me hates future me or something like that. Present me hates, hates past me. Um, if I chose anything else, it would be fine. Okay, so let's um, let's create an X like icon. So looking at any of these, we have, uh, what are they called? Um,
SVGs. Okay, so... So want source. It's probably foundations. Images. And then here they go. Okay, so I want a, like, cancel. It's so, like cancel SVG. Do I want cancel or clear? I might want clear. And that way I can change that out so it's the meaning of this that really matters. And then I, I now I need to go find an SVG for this. So I can do that one, we can do that one. Is there anything else that looks good? We'll just take uh, search off. That could be that could be interesting. We'll just take this close one. So here is I want Download it as an SVG. Oh, 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 it like literally gave it to me, so I didn't need to write this out. Okay, hold on. I guess I could just go and copy that, can I? Um, let's buffer close you. Sure. Okay, there we go. So I want to put you into uh, foundations, images, um, clear SVG. This is what that looks like. Right, so then icon, now stuff in here. First of all, you have that thing. Okay, so we're going to add in uh, clear. Um, okay, the alt text for this. So, um, uh, clear, like clear field or clear, clear logo, I guess. Um, your. You're fine. Can I put in allow here? No. Item should have upper snake case. Oh, it wants you to have all up. No, wait a minute. Why are you upset? What's the rule here? The rule is non-uppercase globals. You're, you're fine. Um, okay, so then you... I'm going to put in clear here. Oh, what is this? This is, this is special, special CSS. 
Uh, we don't necessarily need that. Um, I may not need the nano, but I'm going to leave that in there. What are you upset about? Failed to parse CSS due to text. Rebel Decibel, hello. Why would I pollute my code with all those white space characters? Um, also, hello, how are you doing today? I don't know why. I, for some reason, it works with my brain. For some reason, it just makes it easier for me to see, like, see things. Um, so I, I, I guess that's why. Um, upper snake case. Okay, so non-upper case globals. Okay, there that goes. Okay, so then I have clear as an icon that I can use. So we're going to come back to input and we're going to say, okay, so for, for BB icon, I want to use clear. And if I just use a normal icon type, oh, it's probably going to be huge. Yeah, okay, so there it's huge. And then I want tiny. There we go. Okay. That's looking better. I actually don't mind the little outline around it. Um, for Rust modules, are you a mymod.rs plus the folder for it or a folder with mod? I'm the folder with mod type of person. Uh, I've tried both of them and I didn't like having two things the same name. Uh, and like, I just like having a folder and then everything to do inside of there. Plus sometimes if there's like global logic for that module, I'll put that into the mod.rs. And so I like, I feel like that needs to be in the folder because if I ever like want to copy that folder somewhere else, I don't want to have to copy two things. I want one thing. I want it to be self-contained and it feels like it's literally leaking outside of the folder if I don't do that. You feel reaffirmed? Oh, good. I'm I'm glad I can I'm glad I can reaffirm it. At least there's two of us that feel that way. I I understand that it exists. I don't like it, but I'm not I'm not ever going to like. I, if it was my code that people are going to use, I'm probably going to, I'm going to have like a style guide that says like, no, we're using that thing thing, but it's not going to be like, make me hate my life. If I work on a project in which they're like, no, we're doing it the other way. I'm like, okay, fine. I'll do it the other way, but it's my code. This is mine. I get to do whatever I want here. Okay. What do we think about this? Uh, I'm going to turn off dark mode. Heads up. Um, that doesn't look too bad. I can turn off the, can I turn off the outline? Where is that from? Is that from the button? No, that has border style none. Okay, so it's not from the button. It's from... Is it the image? Is it the icon? Border. Kind of surprised that the border thing doesn't do it. Okay. Oh, wait. I had two border things. So I have... One from Bootstrap bringing, being brought in, and one from, oh, so two with image there. OK. You hear a faint sizzling sound. You wish it was something in between. Uh, you like self-contained, but you don't like searching for the correct mod.rs in your projects when you have many modules. Um, I really like the way that you could do it in, uh, in Node.js. So in Node, 
you don't have to have an index.ts or an index.js inside of folders. You could just put the file and then you could just, um, when you're when you're importing in modules from folders, you could just go, you just import, you know, folder name slash file name. I, I don't understand why that shouldn't have been the way to do it. To me, that would have allowed us to say like, okay, we do mod.rs or we just do whatever we want and have all of our files have some kind of semantic naming scheme. That would have been nice. Um, okay, so you're coming from Bootstrap. I think you're coming from that because of you're an image thumbnail. Why are you an image thumbnail? Um, I must be putting on image thumbnail somewhere in here. There it was, found it. If I remove image thumbnail, or rather, okay. So image thumbnail adds that on, and that's, that's the U. In addition to our border radius utilities, you can use the image thumbnail to give an image a rounded one pixel border appearance. Um, why did I want that? Like I chose it. I, I literally chose to put it in there for some reason. So I am now going to, because I'm using classes here, we can choose to give this. So um, outline. So we can say if if props at outline that else none. Why don't Oh, because uh, I need to close you. I'm surprised it hasn't decided to multi-line that yet. Oh, because you're in, you're in here. Okay, hold on. So that's for that one. Yeah. Okay. So we're going to delete you, put you in there. There you go. That makes it a little bit easier to read. Uh, so now we can do input um, for a icon. We do outline equals false. Wait, wait, the other one was true. Hold on. Um, this is right. I want you to be that. 
there we go. So now you don't have an outline around you anymore. And we have this nice button here. Um, okay, so now I want, when you click on this, to admit out that we clear. Which is going to be this button. Um, now, can I change you to be uh, just a BB button? Ooh, um, sure. Uh, first of all, you have classes, I think. I think we can get rid of you. That's going to be a thing. I don't think I have a style on here. But I think we have a class is. So what if I do this? Right, is it classes or class? It is classes. Okay, classes equals, and then we'll use the CSS. So hold on, we'll put style like that. Okay. Uh, so let's see that closes you for CSS, you for the classes. Okay. Unexpected end of input. Why? Oh, because you needed... I don't actually need you. I just do that. And that just inlines the CSS for it. And you didn't work. Okay, cool. Cool, 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 cool. All right, what happened here? Um, because, okay, so I have the stylist here. I have... I wanted margin left. Can I see that? Cool. No, you didn't find here. Do I need to turn you into... No, you are a styled component. Okay. BG transparent. What? Oh, do I need BG transparent? Maybe... Maybe I do. Um, okay. I, we can do that. We can do that. Was that on the icon? That was on the button, right? Um, that was on here. BG transparent. You go in there. You're unhappy because this is... Oh, oh okay, hold on. Uh, you have CSS like that, so I need classes macro now. Okay, so here, okay, the button has BG transparent on it. Oh, 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 no, 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 look at that, look at that. I have source elements, okay. I did not do that right. Okay, so yeah, I can't use the CSS macro like this anymore. I think it, I think you have to do it differently with stylus now. How am I supposed to do this? Uh, I need to go look it up. It's not, it's not CSS in it, I don't think. Or it's like style from or something like that. I use that to create the style. 
So it's like um, let uh, search clear classes. And then you're not you're not just CSS, you're CSS inside of is it style? From new and then I hand it the CSS. Like that. Would it be easier to have a different button component when that always has an icon rather than passing in CSS? Probably. What if I just not handle the air? <laughs> what would happen? Yeah, what I should probably do is probably put a, I should probably create an input with clear. That didn't do it either, though. So, uh, did that right have the right CSS attached to it now, though? It does. Okay, so at least that has the right CSS attached to it. Um, but okay, here's the margin left one pixel. Oh, that's that's not right. Um, okay. Yeah, I probably should. I probably should have like a clear button. I should probably put this into input. That's where I should really put it. And we should say, okay, there's a clear button in that. That that makes the most sense. In fact, let's just do that. And we already know how to do it anyway, so let's let's go ahead and get rid of you. Get rid of you. Um, and then we'll have I want like a um, we'll go into input here. And so in my props, I want like a, a clear or not. Like, so if we're, if we're clearing, so pub, like clear, a clear button. And that maybe like show clear. And again, the default is don't show the clear. And so if I do want to show the clear, so we can mark that as true. So we'll come back to here where we have our input. I want mark that as true. This is on input, right? Yeah, PB input. Okay. Show clear. Did I not save that? Oh, I didn't save it before I went and added it. Okay. So show, show clear, and now, now I can add this in over here. So here's our input. And we want to put like a button here 
Now, if I need to, I'll just do like a normal button like this. And and we'll we'll be happy. Uh, so then we'll do a, the icon. Um, PB icon types. This would be clear. Okay. Okay, so we're back to this again. Uh, I want the outline none. Okay, like it. Um, and so then what's my choice with, um, if I wanted to do a button, like actually use this button, probably having a button icon where it's just the icon would be nice. There is, There's button style. Okay, I have action icon, but I don't want that because that's like a button on the left of it. So I would probably want this to just be a, this would just be a button icon. So yeah, I probably just need a different button component. So let's, let's create that. So we're gonna call this a button icon. Oh, derive. Um, so I'm going to want the icon type. And that might be it. Oh, it's a button. So I want like an on click too. Um, and I just, you you just get that because you, who cares if you got clicked, that's all you need to know. So this is going to be BB button icon. And we're going to throw in this button here. Okay, so we'll have a button, type button, class. Okay, so this, this should all be fine. 
It's multi-line you. Okay, so button, okay, so type button, class button. Oh, that. Uh, style, margin left. So this one style, I probably want to make more of a stylus thing, but it, it's also fine to be here like this. No, let's do it the other way. So in this case, I want this to be a uh, don't I have this being used? Nope, you're a function component. Are you a styled component? Oh, it's lowercase styled. Like that. Okay, there we go. Styled component. Okay, so we're going to style um, new CSS. That's where you come in. Okay, um, oh, you can option style, but that's, that's okay. Uh, then class now becomes classes. Uh, where we have button, BG transparent. Oh, these all become separate things. Uh, and then style. Then we get rid of you. So now with that, now we don't need you anymore. Uh, you become the icon. Okay, so far so good. Um, let's see. Oh god, implementing derive macros are spooky. You're not about it? Like, creating them or just implementing them? Wait, is that not it? Non camel case types. I'll, oh. Nope, nope. Back. 
There. There we go. Okay. Uh, let's do let on click. I don't need. Oh, I need the on click. Oh, but I can move that in here. I think it will be fine. So let's do a callback. Um, I literally don't care about the event, but I think it's going to be a click event or a mouse event or something like that. Uh, it usually tells me. And I want to say, oh no, I do need to move. I do need to do the move thing. Okay. Every time, every time I need this and I keep on thinking I don't need it. Okay, now we emit out if we've been clicked. Like if I define a new trait and you need to implement the derive macro for it so that other types can go derive my trait. Oh, it's like creating the drive. Yeah, we did that once. We did that once and it's, um, it was, it was interesting. It was an entire process and thing. Yeah, I can see how it can be a little bit spooky, but like spooky usually means we need more practice with it, right? <laughs> Until eventually it becomes second nature. Um, I probably, let's do an event. Let's prevent defaults. You needed the type. It was a mouse event, right? There we go. Okay, so we... It was using a lot of words you've never seen before. Well, yeah. I mean, first time we do something like that, especially code generation, where it's going to do stuff at compile time, so you can't see it. Of course, yeah, that's definitely scary. All right, so... We have our style components. We have this button. It should do the thing. Uh... It should, okay, so it, it should look right. So now I should be able to do a BB button icon. Um, now a button icon doesn't always need to shift left left like this. So I should probably, I should probably have something like shift left. And so then um, we have this, this is going to be the shift left, right? They're going to return that else none. Um, but it's if props. Okay, so then that way we can control whether or not it shows. Uh, and then let's do this also. So that way we can say, hey, uh, you are... You don't have to listen for the event out. We're just going to emit it out regardless if you're listening for it. All right. So now that I have this, we can switch back. So this is going to be a BB button icon. Uh, we're going to go to our data table here. Oh, show clear. So input is now going to... not use this at all 
now we're gonna say if props dot show clear um async job failed what uh okay my lrs is not happy um let's see we're gonna do bb uh i want to return html bb button icon Um, let's do, we'll turn some with that. Oh, wait, wait, do I not need that, the sum? Maybe I don't need the sum. Maybe I don't need the HTML either. Can I just get away with... I think I can just get away with this. Import you. Now you're upset because I'm missing icon type. Okay. And then I want I want your size. Uh because we forgot that. So BB Button icon. It shows up over there. Why? Why when I do it the other way, it doesn't like it? So I have button, button, transparent, type button, images that, did I forget the shift left? Oh, oh yeah, yeah, you're right, you're right. I forgot on, uh, this one, yeah, we do need to shift left. Haha, <laughs> okay. Shift left equals true. You're right, okay, cool. And then that uh, didn't do it. I've like failed. It would have yelled at me if shift left wasn't something I could do. Why didn't this reload? Usually when I save, it should reload and then that resets my view. I'm, I'm a little bit concerned about that. Unless I guess nothing changed. Uh, okay, so button icon. I have shift left. I set that to true. So if props is shift left, I want a margin left 40 pixels. So do I see that? So for this button, do I see a margin left? No, I don't. You didn't get implemented. Why? Okay, so shift left on the button icon. So button icon, shift left equals true. So if shift left to true, then I want to return a new style with a new CSS, margin left, 40 pixels. 
Um, and then what if I do like, I don't know, background color red. Something like that. So that way it's really obvious. There it is. Found it. Okay, so it's not being applied because something else is applying these things. It's uh okay, so where are where are you? How far down do we have to go? Right here. Okay. So margin left is being overwritten by bootstrap, basically just normal, normal stuff. So, okay. That's the reason why it needs to be an inline style because I want this, I need this to be, um, I could, oh, I could give it an important. That might do it or not. Important. Wait, invalid property value. Okay, so hold on. Negative 40 pixels. How do I, where do I make the important thing? At the start. Oh, is that the start? For some reason, the... Oh, that didn't do it either, though. Oh, wait. No, no, no. It's still really unhappy with that. Uh, hold on. No. Stop it. Okay, hold on. I'm gonna do margin. Margin left 40 pixels I think it's at the end oh there it is oh wait no, why are you auto him. Okay. This is what I want. Is isn't this what I had? Margin left colon negative forty pixels bang important. Margin left colon negative forty pixels. Ugh. I put the exclamation point at the wrong end. That's what I was. Yeah, okay. I, I get what you're trying to say. Important at the beginning, and I, I read it opposite of what it actually really is in reality. Okay, so there you go. And then I want outline false for the icon. Uh, so that's the button icon. Let's just make you outline false. There you go. Okay. Now that works. Now I do have that as hard coded as negative 40 pixels. I don't know if that's always what I want. I might run into problems where like if I try to use that in the future, it will just sort of like mess up. But for this use case, it should be fine. If I increase the entire size of everything, you're still correct. It still looks appropriate. So that's good. And so now I emit out 
of button icon. Uh, I do an on click when it's clicked. So then on input, I need an on click on here to, okay, so like on clear essentially. So we'll do on clear. Okay, and then this button, uh, okay, so button icon, we throw on clear in there. Okay, what are you upset about? Closure, uh, okay, well, you don't really have anything. So that, okay, so then this is the event, uh, there was, this is the input, and then we have our pages, uh, our pages table, no, yeah, tables, where we're using the data table. Um, nope, no, no, we need to go to data table title, and here's our input. So now we have show clear, and then next we need unclear. And so we're gonna have our search text. So when I click that, I want to take the search text uh, and we're going to set it to be an empty string again. Okay, so now Now I type in here, we're, we're fine. Why do you, uh, the button's not there when I'm typing? But it's, the, okay. There's some styling when I'm in it. So that part works. What, what, why, where do you disappear? Where are you going? Okay, so here you are with that. You're invisible. Are you behind the scenes? Oh, do I have like a background? I don't think it's none of those things. What causes it what causes it to not be visible? Uh is it because it's oh is there a Z index here?
Yeah, the thing had a Z. Well, this thing had a Z index. Uh, let's see, where's my Z index? No, the button had a Z index. Oh, interesting. So I'm overwriting it. Now it has a Z index of two. If I put a Z index of one, which is pretty pretty much in front, that doesn't matter. If I make this a 100, oh, that does matter. Okay, so I want it more in front. So bootstrap is setting the Z index of input group button. Oh, interesting, okay. Oh, fun. So I need your, your Z index is important too. Okay, we can, we can fix that. There we go. Okay, now it appears and I can clear it. Uh, I can't easily tab over to it, so that's not... Why can't I tab to it? Oh, well, hold on. That sucks. I don't know why it's not selectable with a tab. This is something I might need to like reach out to somebody who knows um, more about uh about css and accessibility than i do uh i don't usually i thought like if i create a button even if i move the button around i wonder if it's the transparent thing that makes it not tab navigatable because like normally a button would be like i could tab onto it and it just works and even if i'm selecting it over here with the tab well maybe i am and i can't see it that's what, okay, never mind, we're okay. I'm tabbing over here because the the uh, the button over here is invisible. The tab arcs, okay, so theoretically, do I need an, do I need an Aria? Aria, um, what are my Aria stuff? Not Aria main role. Are you a button roll? And a roll button tells the screen reader the element is a button, but provides no button functionality. Okay, so we're doing that. Um, what, what's the thing I can do where I can say like, Like, describe what it is. Um, the accessible name may be provided from the ARIA label or label by. Maybe it's this one. There it is. ARIA label. Okay. So, an ARIA label. Uh, which means, okay. And we're just going to put this on, we're going to make that required and put this on here. So button, 
aria label is props dot label okay and label is going to be um clear search there we go okay Bam. So now if you're using a uh, screen reader and you tab over to it, it'll say like, hey, clear search. And you can you can do that fairly easily. Okay, excellent. I like it. It's good. So that's like the search field is like now fairly complete. Uh, we are not emitting out what we're searching yet. Uh, we have that as data table... uh input so i want on the data table title i probably want to emit out what the search is every time that we do search so we're going to do um on search now i could do it an on search input but I am fairly certain that event if I did that for every input and I did and I like emit it out, I would probably drive users or like my servers insane if I was like constantly searching for it, especially if I switch later to a um, some other system. So I am going to instead uh, have a different method which would allow me to potentially add a debounce in later, but I don't have to do it right now. Oh, actually, you know what? Maybe I do want in here, and then the debounce on search input. I do a debounce. I do a callback. I do a wait. Do I implement debounce now? Now for it, or do I wait? If I did a debounce, how does that work? Um, I want to, every time I start typing, I reset the timer and then it goes. And then if the timer goes, we do it. And so, and then I emit out, hey, I, the thing, the thing happened. Uh, there's glue timers. And then I can do a glue timer reset on an input. Um, let me see how this works. If I do glue... Timers callback style, just a one time timeout. When scheduled, you can drop the timeout to clear it or forget to leak it. Once forgotten, the interval will keep running forever. If I drop the timeout to clear it. Oh, so as soon as this ends, it would stop it. So I need to keep the timeout around. Otherwise, it won't run. So what does that mean? I need uh, I need to keep the timeout in a store. I need a use state.
Oh, again. Do I put this on the title? I don't actually know if I put this on a title or not. This might actually go in the input field. Oh, I probably I probably want to put this on the input uh, component because then that way I can just use it no matter where. It's just always debalanced and it's a consistent debalance across everything I use. That makes a lot of sense to me. Okay, I think that's what I'm going to save for next time. Uh, I should, okay, so I should be able to on search, uh, let's see, on search, callback. Search text. Wait, so this is data table table, so on search, yeah, yeah, okay. I should admit out, so on search here, so let, so I use that, okay, so I should be able to just clone you, and then also, Okay. Oh, input search text. Um, you are a attribute value. We know that. Okay. 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 So then, um, so that goes out every time that the input fields tells us that we're got new search, which means that if I want to test this, I want, okay, so on search, let's, um, I need to handle this, okay. So now we need to on search here. Okay, so you're happy? No, you're not happy. Searching for, oh, because you don't know what that is. Uh, so we have to do as aster. Then you'll be happy. So this isn't great, but on every single character that's put in, I should see a log out. There we go searching for and we see what we're searching for and it's so that way the parent component for the data table can now search against all the fields if i want to and um well then you know do do something with it cool all right so we have a we have a search i think for right now we're essentially done with the title so the next part about this is going to be the body of it, right? The table itself. And then we have to do the sorting. We have to do the searching and all that fun stuff. We already have a table uh, component. So it, sh it might be easy enough just for us to throw that in there. And it'll be, it'll be good to go. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and we're going to quit and push this on up.
All right, so this is a uh, work in progress essentially, but we have, I guess we have finished um, data table title. Next up will be the, uh, the data table like main body. All right, and that is going on up. All right, everybody, thank you uh, so much for hanging out with me today. Um, I think we got a lot done. Now, we're the course. Um, I want, uh, we've, we've got some really good feedback. We've got it in a pretty good place. Uh, this weekend, I'll be able to upload the, the environment variable lesson and add that to the course uh, because now uh, it's been 24 hours since I recorded that on Twitch only. So I'll be able to get that going. Uh, and then uh, I don't see, I think at that point we're, we're ready for uh, sales. We're ready for like to open it up and, and make it available. Uh, I need to update Stripe and like add in the ability, like create an actual payment account and do that. So that's my job this weekend to set it up so that way you can purchase it. And then hopefully it will automatically um, uh, bring you bring you over to it. So I'll do a test uh, this weekend, make sure it's working for me. Uh, and then I'll announce that on discord first. So let everybody know over there, like do some tests with it if you want to purchase it. Uh, and then I'll announce it. Um, I'll do like a probably on stream on Monday, I'll announce it, um, on Monday morning and we'll, we'll like go from there. So YouTube essentially, um, X Twitter, all the socials, you know, all the normal places. It'll be like, We'll be ready to go. And then a week after that, I think I'll be ready to like actually tell like, you know, this week in Rust, this week in Rust and every place else. Hey, go ahead. Like general public, check, check it out. So that's the plan. Uh, just to make sure that everything's working as it is. Uh, we're going to set the price for this course at $5. So um, hopefully nice and cheap. Uh, if you um, can't pay for that or or something else, just uh, come to Discord. Let me know. We'll figure something out. Uh, all right, uh, everybody. I hope that you have a great rest of your Friday. I hope that you have a great weekend, and uh, I will see you all next week. Bye.